Welcome back. This is a new video in the Space Rocks Godot game engine development series. And this time around, we're going to be talking about moving this project over to the new version of Godot 3.0. Now, 3.0 is currently in alpha, which means it is not stable, not considered ready for prime time yet. But I've been using it a lot lately, and it's looking really good. So I'm going to make this project my uh, experiment for using uh, some of the new features in it and showing how some of the things that are changing from 2.1 to 3 how they're going to work. So a couple of quick notes first. This is running in the latest build as of the day I'm recording this of the 3.0 alpha. It will not work with alpha 1, the one that you can download. So you will have to build your own version if you want to run this code. If you haven't built the Godot engine before, it is really easy. It's probably one of the easiest open source projects to build that I've ever come across. Uh, the directions are here on the website. Go ahead and take a look, clone the repository, and give it a shot. If you're not up for that, uh, another possibility is you can get daily builds at this website. And over here you can see a build just about every day so that you can make sure you've got the latest version of the code. Of course, be aware that sometimes that means things will break. But I'll put the links to these below so that you can get them and uh, either build or download a build yourself. So what's changed? Well, if you haven't looked at 3.0 before, you'll see that there's a lot of minor UI changes. Things have been moved around a little bit. The color scheme's a little different. But overall, the engine is still the Godot engine you're familiar with. Specifically, moving the game over, there were some things that needed to change and some things I changed along the way since as I was doing it, it was convenient. Now, it is possible in Godot 2.1 to use the export tool. And this will do some conversion of your scenes and things like that. However, it's not exactly perfect. Uh, when I tried it with this project, uh, the result was a bunch of errors, mainly from things like the textures not being converted the same. We used the Sprite Sheet Atlas Importer tool to grab all of the Kenny art from the, from the art pack, and that doesn't work in the new, in 3.0. Uh, the texture format has changed. The import process has changed for assets in 3.0. So you still have to do a lot of manual changes. All right, so what's changed? Well, probably the biggest changes happened with the asteroids. So I decided this time around, as I was converting things, to make the asteroids rigid bodies instead of kinematic bodies. And the reason I did that is, one, it makes the code a little simpler. We just give them a linear velocity when we spawn them and send them on their way. Uh, we still use the same process of choosing the texture depending on what size we want and making a collision shape to match. But now we're just going to set a li linear velocity when the asteroid is created and let it go. And that also lets us do a mass. So I can assign, and in the global I assigned a value here for the asteroid mass. So the big rocks have a much bigger mass than the tiny ones. And that means when they bounce off of each other, the big ones, you know, if a little one bounces off a big one, the little one will bounce more. The big one will barely be affected. And that looks a little better. It looks, looks nicer. You'll see when we run it. Uh, we also, uh, we still have the little puff of smoke coming off when they hit, same as we did before. Uh, but also what I did was in the main, instead of having the asteroids wrap around, I just created some invisible walls here out of static bodies. So these are the edges here. They're just four static bodies. So the rocks are going to go off the screen a little bit and bounce back on. And I made these bouncy, so they'll make sure you know to send it back onto the screen. And that looks a little nicer too. Uh, and then the last thing I changed about the rocks was the spawning. Instead of putting a bunch of position 2Ds like we did before. 
So I just drew a path 2D around the edge and to spawn the asteroid when we when we have a new one, for example, we will just pick a random spot. So when we do spawn asteroid, oh sorry here, when we do in the new level, right, because we want to spawn new ones, we just pick a random offset on that path follow and put the asteroid at its location. And that just means they can spawn, that way they can spawn anywhere along the edge. And that's a little better, that'll be a little better when we have a lot more of them spawning too. And something big you'll notice in the code is that it looks a lot more, it looks a lot cleaner and a lot more, let me zoom this in a little bit, uh, a lot shorter basically. And that's because we're taking advantage of a couple of new GDScript features, uh, one of which is this dollar sign shorthand. So this dollar sign music, music is the music node over here, is equivalent to saying get node music dot play. Right? That is something we had to write all the time in 2.1. And it also means that if you're going to be referencing this node a lot, we don't have to do that on ready var music equals get node music that we had a whole ton of at the top of our scripts. And so it got rid of a lot of code. And in fact, I just did a quick count. And while this project does the same thing as the 2.1 version, it has a little bit less than half the number of lines of code. So we've really trimmed it down and made it more concise. Less code is always better because the more code you have, the more places you can have bugs. So this is so this is good. And let's see. So that's mainly the changes to the rocks. To the player and the enemy, we also made a little change on the bullets. So previously we were making the bullets that the that these entities shot uh, children of that entity. But what that meant was that if the enemy shoots at me, if the enemy gets blown up, those bullets that it shot will just instantly disappear. And we don't want that. We want the bullets to be in the main scene. So we've created a shoot signal. And that shoot signal is both the enemy and the player have that signal. They both have a bullet configured, which is just a scene that they load. And when they shoot, they emit that signal. And that signal passes along with it what bullet object is being shot what position the bullet should appear at, and what rotation or direction that bullet should go in. And then in the main, we have an add bullet function here, which will which that signal is connected to, which is just going to spawn that bullet in a bullet container here. Uh, and that will also allow us in the future, you know, if we decide we want the player to have these laser bullets, but also maybe a heat-seeking missile or something. They can load a different kind of weapon, and you know, and then when we do the shoot, we can emit the signal and say spawn one of those type of weapons instead of the bullet, and that'll be a lot more flexible as well. If we play the game, you'll see it pretty much looks exactly the same as it did before. We can fly around, we can shoot the asteroids, we can shoot the bad guy who shoots back at us, and that's all working as before. Now I had been posting all of the code for this project and the other tutorials here on this GitHub repository, but for Space Rocks now that it's starting to get kind of big, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this over to a new repository all of its own, and I'll link to that below as well. I recommend you clone that and take a look at it when you've downloaded once you've downloaded or built. Uh, your own version of 3.0 so that you can play around with it and see how those changes worked out. All right, so as we move forward, I've been working a lot on the updates to the official Godot 3.0 docs. And as I do that, and I work on some of the different nodes, some of the different functionality, uh, those will be the perfect times to incorporate that into this project. 
some of the next steps are going to be to add a UI for upgrades so that we can upgrade our ships, uh, you know, the various performance. So we start out with our ship being slow and weak and gradually be able to upgrade it to uh, increase those abilities. After that, we're going to be working on the title screen and things like that. We're going to start talking about how to export your project so you can run this on uh, desktop platforms and, and distribute it online. And whatever else we think of, feel free to post some suggestions in the comments below if you have some additions you'd like to see. And I will see you next time.